You want to know what's funny? Every game I go out the tunnel, a home game or away game, people are yelling at me, you're special, Gronk. You're special. We all know you are. <laughs> is up everyone welcome to Eckler's Edge I'm Liz Loza and this is of course Chargers running back fantasy superstar and esteemed holiday decorator Austin Eckler <laughs> I don't know where that one came from but welcome back everyone excited for another episode and uh, let's get going we have got a great show for you we'll preview the big time running back showdown between the Chargers and the Bengals in Cincinnati we'll debate whether three fantasy stars from week 12 will hit or miss in week 13 and future hall of famer rob gronkowski joins the show all right austin your chargers dropped one in denver however you hit 99 total yards and grabbed a 12 yard touchdown reception to make your fantasy managers very happy yeah yeah good day for uh the fantasy owners um including myself on my fantasy team, but not a good day for the Chargers. Just weren't consistent enough. I talk about it all the time, and that's what it comes down to in the NFL, who plays at a higher level than the other team, and the Broncos definitely showed up, and you know, shout out to them for you know outplaying us that day. Your Chargers are currently a wild card team in the AFC, as are your opponents for Week 13, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are 7-4 and four following decisive wins over the Raiders and the Steelers. It's a big matchup for us, right? As you said, we're in a wild card spot right now, so to kind of secure our playoff picture moving forward, we got to get this one. It's a big game for us. We have to talk about the running backs in this one. You are currently Fantasy's RB2 on the season, while the Bengals' Joe Mixon is the RB3 overall. Joe Mixon, he's been carrying that thing over there. They've been feeding him, and he's been you know, making plays with it. And obviously, over with the Chargers, I'm getting my touches too, whether it's in the pass game or in the run game, which is why you know I feel like I'm just a little bit above as far as desirability and fantasy. But that's why we look forward to it, and that's why I'm uh, excited to see this matchup go down. Let's dig into some numbers, because the total numbers are very close. You've obviously done more of your damage catching the ball than Mixon has. You have one more total touchdown and about 15 more fantasy points. And not that I'm biased, but you've been much more efficient with your opportunities. I think that's just the dynamic of, you know, how I've, I'm implemented into the offense. Joe Mixon's a bigger guy. You know, they rely on him more as like a traditional running back, getting 20 plus carries, stuff like that. You know, I'm not getting 20 plus carries. I'll tell you that right now. I might get 20 touches, you know, and that would be a high side for me but as far as my efficiency it comes and look I have a limited amount of touches I know that I'm going to be getting I have to make sure every time I have the ball in my hands I'm trying to make something happen I want to show you how Yahoo Sports fantasy expert Matt Harmon sees your Sunday in Cincinnati going I think you're looking at yet another really strong total yardage outing a really strong day through the air and even on the ground as well for Austin Eckler here in week 13 I'm fearlessly forecasting 125 total yards and nine catches sheesh I feel about that, friend. Sheesh, nine catches, huh? Are you going to go over or under Matt's projection here? It's over under 125. Oh, my gosh. That's a good one. That's a good forecast. I'm going to say push. I'm going to say I'm going to be hopefully within like five, ten yards of that okay. on either side. All right. All right. Now I want to show you Matt's fearless forecast for Joe Mixon. We are once again Firing up Joe Mixon with very high expectations. I'm fearlessly forecasting 121 total yards, two catches, and a touchdown. So, Austin, are you going to take the over or the under? I'm taking the under because I'm saying our defense is going to step up and make some tackles this week. And I'm hoping, you know, we can keep them off the field as well with our time of possession by us scoring points. So it's complimentary, right? So I'm going to take the under, take the under. But, you know, I think he's still going to get his own. He's definitely going to he's definitely going to do his thing, right? He's still a great player and great players find a way to make plays. But uh, it's going to be a good matchup, like I said. This week, we're going to play a little game of hit or miss. Let's begin with our old friend, the Anaconda. Where Daryl Patterson touched the ball 18 times for 135 total yards and two rushing scores at Jacksonville. This Sunday, however, he'll face the Bucks' top-rated run defense. So will he hit and squeeze out some fantasy points for managers or... Will he miss in a tough matchup? 
So I actually went hit on this, and here's why. Uh, it's because they're going to give him the ball. They're going to force him, whether he's got to have five, six, seven catches the game, or he's got to run the ball, you know, 16, 17 times. They're going to be like, hey, Cordell, you got to go make plays for us because you're one of our best playmakers on this team, if not the best. He's going against, you know, the Bucks, but he's going to get his touches and he's going to make some plays and get some yardage. And I think he's going to hit this week. I agree with you. Cordero Patterson is the engine of the Falcons offense, whether it's on the ground or through the air, he is getting all kinds of touches, all kinds of places. If the Bucks want to shut him down on the ground, no problem. We know how many injuries they have in their secondary. He can get it done through the air. So I think that's where you're going to see him pop and he is indeed going to hit. Speaking of getting it done through the air, Kendrick Bourne found his identity in week 12, hauling in five balls for 61 yards and two touchdowns. But this Monday, he'll go up against a Bills squad that's allowed just three scores to the position all year. So can he hit or will he miss? Shout out to the Bills secondary for, yeah, holding this receivers down. Man, but I think, you know, Kendrick Bourne, he's going to face some of that, right? The Patriots are trying to get this man the ball. He's been dynamic with the ball, especially these last couple weeks. I'm going to say hit. If they're actually going to win this game, Kendrick Bourne's going to have to make the plays that he's been making, making people miss, run down the sideline and get in the end zone. I agree with you. I think he's going to hit as well. You mentioned how over the past couple of weeks, he's really emerged as a playmaker for the Patriots. He's averaged over 10 yards per reception in back-to-back -back weeks. He now has three receiving scores over his last three weeks. And here is... A key thing, the Bills lost Tredavious White, one of the best cornerbacks in the entire league, to an ACL tear on Thanksgiving. They are going to be down one of their biggest defensive stars, and I think that should open things up or certainly make it easier for Bourne to find the end zone again in Week 13. The Bills clearly missed Dawson Knox while he was out with a hand injury. His two-touchdown effort on Thanksgiving is a major reason why. He's actually the scoring leader among all tight ends with seven touchdowns on the season. Do you think Knox can hit again on Monday night? or will he miss versus a Patriots defense that's allowed the fewest fantasy points to opposing tight end? I think Doss is going to have a hard time just because I know how the Patriots play. Everyone already knows, you know, the Patriots are going to double two people down in the red zone and he's going to be one of them because he's their, you know, red zone threat. I don't think he's going to get in the end zone. And so for that reason, I think it's going to be a miss. The Patriots have to be taken seriously. They have ripped off six wins in a row. Their defense is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Is he finding the end zone against this Patriots defense? No way. I think he misses in week 13. We are extremely excited to be joined by four-time Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Bucks tight end and fantasy football deity, Rob Gronkowski. Thanks so much for joining us, Rob. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I'm just curious uh, if you've ever, you know, paid attention to the fantasy community or have your own team or anything like that. Oh, of course, man. Uh, I've known about fantasy football since I, you know, my freshman year in college. That's when I was really introduced to it. After like two weeks of doing fantasy football, I actually like stopped setting my roster. I kept forgetting to, you know, switch out players. And I was like shaking my head every week. So obviously I lost because I was starting guys that were on bye weeks. It was too much. So I actually yeah. haven't played since, but I'm all about fantasy football. I think it's great for the league. I think it's great for the fans. I mean, I think it's just a great way to bring, you know, people that love football and bring them together. Yeah, I 100% agree. That's how the show came into existence, man. You might not have a, a team, but I know you're uh, making an impact on a lot of uh, teams out there. You know, I, love, I know Liz actually just found out she has you on one of her teams. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, Liz. So, like, when I'm playing, like, obviously, I was just hurt for a couple weeks. But, you know, when I'm in that roster, you got to be a little happy, Liz. Come on. <laughs> Rob, 123 yards last week. Hello, shootout against Indianapolis. You guys won. Of course I was thrilled. What was the name of your fantasy team back in college when you oh. started your fantasy journey? All right. Well, I... I actually don't remember, but let me tell you, I was in college, I was freshman, I was like 19, 18 years old. It would probably be not even appropriate enough to <laughs> even even say my fantasy team name. <laughs> I, I can I can probably guarantee that you know at that age I'm glad there was really no social media yet when I was when I was you know a freshman in college. <laughs> what about any crazy stories or interactions with fantasy fans? Obviously, when you see people out on the streets or in the store or something, you know people come up to you like, you know, yo, I had you on fantasy, man, you killed it for me this year, like. <laughs> You, you won me $300 and my favorite thing would be like, man, well then where's my share? Where's my cut? And I've actually had a few times where people take out their wallet and they give me like $100 on the spot. 
And I'm just like, man, I'm just messing with you here. Take your money back. For me, it actually goes even deeper. People find people for whatever reason are like Venmoing people like they like request a Venmo request if I have like a bad game or something like that. I'm like, y'all need to chill out. Oh, <laughs> that was the worst. If you don't play oh. well, oh no, they are on your head. Oh, let me tell you, if you're playing well, you are a fantasy hero. But oh, let yeah. me tell you, if you don't put up points that week, yeah, don't check your social media. Don't don't check your Venmo because you're right. They, they, they hit you up with a Venmo like, yo, you owe me like 20 bucks this week. Can you tell us what you're doing with USAA, the USO, and your Gronk Nation Youth Foundation for this year's My Cause, My Cleats oh, campaign? Of course I can. You know, I got size 16 cleats, you know, big cleats, a lot of room to write some messages. You know what I mean? So I got the I got the USO on on the you know one side of my cleats on the left cleat. Then I got on the right cleat I got the Grant Nation Youth Foundation. So this year is special because I'm you know I'm raising awareness to two causes. One supports military families, the USO, and they do a great 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 job with everything. And the other is the Grant Nation Youth Foundation, uh, which supports kids and gives them the chance to succeed, um, you know, with the proper equipment to play sports. It's much respect, man. I respect that because it takes people to care about people. And we're in a position where we can help out with resources. And so I appreciate you uh, doing that. Man, if I can help people, right, get on the same path as just trying to find a passion and get started, you know, that just means the world to me. And so, yeah, it takes people like yourself, man. I uh, appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, I don't know if you figured out a way to get USAA insurance yet. Uh, no. But keep working. <laughs> keep working. Yo, yo, awesome. I keep telling them, man, I'm special. <laughs> Like, I'm special, oh, just give man. me that insurance. Okay, Mr. Gronkowski, USAA is for the military community and their families. That's what makes us special. Oh, but I'm special. Yo, what, you wanna know what's funny? Every game, I go out the tunnel, <laughs> a home game or away game, people are yelling at me, you're special, Gronk, you're special. We all know you are. <laughs> I just crack oh, up laughing man. every time. It's great, man. Great. I love your personality, man. Keep being yourself. And I appreciate you being on here, man. Yeah, no, no problem, Austin. Thanks for having yeah. me, ma'am. Rob Gronkowski on Eckler's Edge. Man, that was fun. Yes, you know, Rob, always a great personality. I'm glad he came on the show. Talks of fantasy, talks some life. Uh, and to those of you guys that are watching, I appreciate you also coming to the show. And good luck in your matchup this week, especially if you have me on your team. And uh, we'll see you next week.